Our speaker this morning is fellow practitioner, Vance Gardner, who I like to call a quiet fire because of what he, to me, is a, his fervent search after truth, and that which seems to set the agenda for the way he lives. You can always expect him to share with you very useful insights into living more effectively by fine-tuning fine your spiritual practice. Friends, please help me welcome practitioner Francis Gardner. With your permission, just remove this mask. <laughs> um, thanks, Carol, and I am Vance, and I, I'm not Boris, but you won't get any singing today. <laughs> and thanks, Temple of Light, and everyone joining us online and in consciousness. Let us take a deep breath. Just inhale and exhale. And just become aware of the sunshine and the beautiful surroundings of our grounds and the sanctuary and the beauty of wherever you may be. And just look at the flowers as we applaud Kay for the flowers and Judy for the arrangement. It's truly an expression of love. Yes, my friends, for all these things, let us say, thanks God. Thanks God. Thanks God. Thanks God. Yes, thanks. Amy Mori, a psychotherapist, mental strength trainer, and international best-selling author, says that the simplest and most effective way to improve your mental strength is to practice gratitude on a daily basis. She explains that practicing gratitude will change your mindset by increasing your resilience, bolstering your self-esteem, and helping you to see the positive side of any situation. She cites several research papers to support her position, and she recommends several ex exercises that we have encouraged from this platform, like keeping a gratitude journal and daily journaling on three things for which you are grateful each day. Whenever I think about gratitude, I always seem to remember an incident I experienced on the Portmore Causeway before it became a highway. I was doing 65 kilometers per hour when a policeman signaled me to stop. Somewhat stunned, I asked what was the problem and he told me that I was speeding. Confident in my ignorance of the speed limit, I told him that I was only doing 65 on the highway. He then showed me the speed limit sign and informed me that the causeway was not a highway and that I was in a 50 miles, 50 kilometers per hour zone. I told him I was sorry. I thought it was a highway because there is sea on either side. <laughs> he was very understanding and he said that he was only going, giving me a warning and I expressed my gratitude by saying thank you with great relief. He then said something so profound that it has stayed with me all these years. He said saying thank you is not enough. You must show your appreciation. <laughs> yes, friends. Thankfulness is not enough. We must show our appreciation. <laughs> Long ago, when I was a very young lecturer at Excelsior Community College, having just completed my undergraduate degree at the UWI, and saw myself as a young Walter Rodney, anti-imperialist and African conscious youth, I had a high afro, I was very big 
heard it at the time. As if you speak to our congregant, Laura Davis, or Jennifer McDonald, who knew me from, I was on campus, they can attest to this. I received a gift from a girlfriend of mine at the time, which I didn't use because I thought it would, ap it would be appear that I was now subscribing to petty bourgeois consciousness. My friend then accused me of not appreciating her gift. And I told her that I truly appreciate it. And then she then asked me, so why don't you use it? Uh, I didn't want to say that I am and don't deal with vanity, but, you know. <laughs> but it's true that when we appreciate a gift, we use it. The master teacher, Jesus of Nazareth, as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 14 to 30, use the parable of the talents to make this point in explaining the kingdom of heaven and how the mind works. The parable tells us of a man going into a far country and he called his three servants and gave them his goods. Unto the first servant, he gave five talents. Unto another, he gave two talents. And unto the third, he gave one talent, each according to their ability, and he went on his journey. The one who received the five talents went and traded with his talents and made five more. The one who was given two went and did likewise and doubled his talents. But he that received one talent hid his Lord's money in the earth. The Lord returned and asked each man, to account for his use of the talents. The one who received the five talents and the one who received two talents show that they had doubled what they have received and the Lord praised them as good and faithful servants and he would make them ruler over many things and they could enter into the joy of the Lord. The one who received one talent and in it, he gave his excuse his excuses, and he explained his fear of failing and that he's, he's returning the talent because he didn't want to risk losing it. The Lord was not pleased and took the talent from him and gave it to the man who now had ten talents, giving rise to the famous verse, for unto he that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance, and he that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. Irving C., in Learning to Live, tells us that three servants each represents each of us at different levels of consciousness. The five talent man refers to the use of our five physical senses to develop the corresponding inner senses of insight, intuition, discernment, imagination, and remembering. The two talent man refers to our gift to work hard, our industriousness, and our confidence that what we do, we can, what we set out to do, we can do it. When we use these gifts to develop faith and intentionality, we are well on our way in life, and new vistas will be open up to us. The one talent man is like many people who haven't received the greatest gift of all, life and consciousness. Don't recognize it, and instead live from a consciousness of lack and limitation, excuses, and fear of failure. My friends, there is one life, and that life is God. And it is my life, it is your life, it is our life. This life awaits our recognition and acceptance that this gift is my life now. This realization comes from developing the other talents, and it is taken away when we don't. If we don't use it, we lose it but only at the level of our awareness, because like the prodigal, the father 
awaits us coming to our senses and to ourselves. So life is God's gift to us. And what we do it show our appreciation and it is our gift to God. That's why I have entitled this encouragement, Living Our Appreciation. Joseph Campbell tells us to follow our bliss and don't be afraid. And doors will open for us where we didn't know they were going to be. He goes on to say that doors will open for you that wouldn't have opened for anyone else. There is one life knowing itself as you. If you use your gifts by developing your inner gifts and awaken to your magnificence, then this is showing and living your appreciation. I have a friend who went on a journey into a far country. Surprisingly, since he's a preacher, among other roles he plays in life. He sent me a text one day saying that he was sick and tired of being sick and tired and that he's asking me to pray for him. I was very concerned and I told him, brethren, put on the sick and tired thing and take up the opposite of they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings and as eagles and we all know the verse and I did my prayer work as I always do when anyone requests prayer support so I did a prayer of light for him we lost contact for a few months and then I contacted his wife to ask him to give me a call well he called all excited saying he got an opportunity and he wanted to contact me to help him to remember how to sell life insurance. I detected that his energy level had shifted and he was now vibrating at a higher level. He said he really appreciated this opportunity and he wanted to make the best use of it based upon what was happening in his life. Things really got interesting when he told me where he would be working and what he had to do to meet their qualifications. Now to qualify for a life insurance contract, you are usually given eight weeks to sell a certain number of cases, which very few people achieve. But if you show promise, you are usually given more time, and then you are contracted. He told me what he had to do in the eight weeks, but then what he said sparkled me and this is last month, June 2020, during all the restrictions that we were on at that time. He said he intended to do the target in three weeks. I took a breath and gave myself space, using my practitioner training to allow spirit to speak through me, saying, yes, you can, and I will help you in whatever way I can. While another part of me was, stream, was screaming, Bridget, you're mad? <laughs> Nobody ever did that yet? Meaning that, are you crazy? No one has ever done that. <laughs> well, friends, one of my favorite poems is somebody said it couldn't be done. And I wasn't going to be that person. Ernest Holmes tells us that if we accept the consciousness of the world, then that will be our experience. For the last three weeks in the month of June, he kept calling and asking for assistance. And the feedback I was getting from him made me recognize that not only was he absolutely committed to his goal, but he was now going into the zone. That place where you are so one with your intention that everything just seems to fall into place. Well, guess what? He did it. In June 2020, he became the first person on a life insurance pre-contract to do that many cases and place over $1 million of premium. 
premium income in three weeks, which is more than, some t than entire units have done in some months. In June 2020, when the insurance companies in Jamaica were providing assistance to agents because of the challenges that agents were facing, this man did something that was phenomenal, even in the best of times. And he said to me, he had changed his mindset. And he now trusted that God's plan for him must be good, even when he cannot see it. In Matthew 6, Jesus tells us that if we aspire to the kingdom of heaven, that is the fulfillment and of doing and being our best by using our gifts to serve and awaken others, and also the right use of the law of mind, then all the good we desire will manifest in our lives. The parable of the talents shows that when we live in appreciation of our gifts, by using it as how the master teacher instructs us to find our bliss and live it, then the law will make us ruler over many things. Ernest Holmes, in Living the Sand of Mind on page 20, states that the sum total of all our thinking decides what is going to happen to us. And Jesus, in the Gospel of Thomas, says that if we bring out what's inside of us, it will save us. But if we don't, it will destroy us. Life is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift to God. Live your appreciation by developing your inner senses to find your place. What gifts are you here to give? Then through faith <coughs> <coughs> and intention and the right use of the law of mind, like that you learn through this teaching, the signs of man and spirit, you will become ruler over many things through the great realization as stated by, by our founder. And I'm going to ask you to repeat it. There is one life. There is one life. That life is God. That life is God. And that life is my life now. This is your assignment if you decide to accept it. Live from this realization and try not to forget to remember that life is God's gift to you and how you live your appreciation is your gift to God. Namaste.